They're farmers, they're all women. Even the warriors. You ever watch the ants that have little trails? You see these big giant ants with these big, what do they call them, uh, you know, pinchers? They're females. They're not guys. They're walking around like this, you know, right? They're all ladies. All the guys do is, you know, they have sex once a year. And what happens is you have 500 guys going after one female. One makes it. The other 499 walk around going, did you get any dough? No, I didn't get it. And they die. It, they have a nice life until, you know, until that happens. But, and it, whereas the termites, it's not the same thing. See, the termites, they only have the queen as a female. The rest of them are guys, <coughs> except for the, the, the folks that take care of the queen, you see? Big difference. And a lot of people don't seem to understand how they can tell. A lot of times when you have termites, you really are having carpenter ants. If you have a termite company come to your home, and they'll say, yeah, you got termites. You ask them, termites or carpenter ants? He'll say, lady, who cares? You're still going to get tented, right? Big difference, okay? You can, you can do the carpenter ants yourself. Why do they call carpenter ants? Because they work their way through their woods. They don't eat the wood. They just work their way through the woods. Termites, on the other hand, eat the wood. And they look identical. But the difference, you remember, one's totally female-run organization. The other ones are guys. How do you tell the difference between ladies and guys? One way is ladies have a, have a, have a shape. Guys usually have a tummy. So the, 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 uh, the ants, if you look at their body, they have a thin, thin waist. Those are females. Uh, termites, they all have a, they all, if you look at their body, they get, it looks like there's no waist, they have a tummy. It's one way off their bat. And, you know, they do a lot of things similar. For example, they, they swarm. That means that a couple of times a year, remember I told you about sex, well, this is what happens. They swarm, there's too much in their colony, a queen will separate with a whole group, and they will go off, fly off. But the way they find that group is a whole bunch would mate, and sooner or later, the one would mate, and they would go off and start another colony. So they do go off and they swarm, the same thing with the carpenter, the termites, they do swarm. Now the difference is, another way you can tell the difference is the wings. The wings are of, the, of the ants and the wings of the termites are different. And the way you can tell is that you have the wings, the wings of the ants, the veins all come out from the, from the body and the, the, the wings are filled with the veins going up. Whereas the termites, there's one little vein that goes up to, it's like a, like a leaf. One little vein goes up to center and veins come out from that one. So you look at the leaves, you go, huh, see, carpenter ants, termites. Okay, the way you treat them is completely different. Because the way you treat termites, we'll talk about termites later, but the, the way you treat carpenter ants is you've got to remember that they're very social folks, and whatever you tell one ant, they all know. See, that's because they're female. So you tell one ant, they all share with each other. As a matter of fact, uh, ants used to have one colony, now, and they used to fight each other. Now they don't. As a matter of fact, the, the California Argentine ants are the world's largest. The world's largest colony is right here in California. And they used to be from Argentina, right? In Argentina, you go over there, and the ants fight each other. All the colonies are constantly fighting each other, and, and except for two places, California and Spain. So somehow somebody went to Spain, took some ants with them, you know, on the plane, and now they're over there. And, and that's the second largest colony. But what happens is they don't fight each other anymore. Something happened when they got to California, dude surfing, whatever, they're mellow, and they don't fight each other anymore. Because of that, they, they made it, and they're now a massive, massive colony. A colony can have 10, 15, 20 queens, and it spreads for miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. One colony. So we're probably sitting on one massive colony right now. Okay? And so the way you, the way you treat them is entirely different. You, they, have a, they have a weakness. I call it the Trojan horse weakness because, you know, uh, ants have two stomachs. One they eat for themselves, and one they take back to food to take back to their colony. See? And a lot of stuff in the market now are made from boric acid. They're basically ant baits. And that's one of the ways that you, you learn to control ants is a baiting system. Okay? I call it ant behavior modification because what you're doing is you're training the ants to behave a little differently. Because you know, I, I, uh, it's like the Wizard of Oz, you know those monkeys that walk around, wee -oh, wee -oh. so you have them as, you, as your allies. You have the ants work for you. Okay? And you train them. You teach them to do, to, to, you know, to do things. You, in other words, you teach them to stay out of the house because you don't want them in the house. But they can be outside. They can do. I have a lot of customers, which I don't use any poison whatsoever. I just feed the ants. And I, 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 I regain the balance of the soil. The first thing I do is I say, okay, you got to control your watering. You got to stop using chemical fertilizers. You got to heal the tree. You got to learn to use compost and rock dust. Bring everything back to life. The ants will mellow right down and they do their own thing. Because the ants are nature's janitors.